All right, guys, so this film that I'm about to talk to you about is one that I am super excited to talk about. It's one that I had wanted to see ever since I saw the first trailers for it. In general, it just looked freaking awesome, and I can finally say that I have seen it. I went to see it with a friend earlier this week, and the movie I'm talking about is Isle of Dogs, directed by Wes Anderson and featuring the voice talents of Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, and many others. This stop-motion animated film takes place in the fictitious Japanese city of Megasaki, in which a dog flu and snout fever epidemic has caused the dog-hating mayor Kobayashi to order the deportation of all dogs to Trash Island. The film follows a pack of dogs who have been sent to Trash Island as they help a young boy named Atari, who has hijacked a small engine aircraft in search of his own lost dog who has been deported to Trash Island. This is no shocker considering this is a film by Wes Anderson, but I just gotta say, the way this film looks is amazing. The animation flows really well and is beautiful to look at. The color palette is really fun. A lot of the ways the shots are framed, particularly the close-up shots, are framed almost like you would see in a live-action film with a conversation between two people. In general, the story is really fun to follow, with really witty writing and really dry, deadpan humor. This is also no shocker when it comes to Wes Anderson films. I mean, Wes Anderson films are generally filled with a lot of dry humor and deadpan humor. I have to say this is really well enhanced by the vocal performances by the cast. Brian Cranston is a standout here in his voiceover work for Chief. Chief is the one dog in the pack of dogs that we're following that is the one who really does not trust humans in general. The film also has a very strong influence from Japanese cinema. There are very many classic Japanese films that I have seen that I could see pieces of when watching this film especially when it came down to the framing of sun shots, and also with the soundtrack, which is awesome to listen to, by the way. The score in this film is by Wes Anderson's frequent collaborator, Alessandro Desplat. And, you know, I totally butchered the pronunciation of his name, so sorry, sir, if you happen to be watching, which you're probably not, but if you are, I apologize. It doesn't really sound like a score you would hear from him. This one is very distinct, and it was a joy to listen to. When it comes to any film, whether it's animation or live action, the way that the film is presented and the way the story flows is honestly one of the most original I've seen in a long time. The way that they did this was really inventive and it was honestly just a joy to watch. And I might be overanalyzing the film a little bit because I tend to do that with movies. I tend to analyze them a little bit more than they're meant to be sometimes. There seems to be a parallel that Wes Anderson is trying to make between what is happening with the dogs in their deportation to Trash Island, and a lot of the anti-immigration sentiment that is being touted around today, especially in the US. Even though the characters that are being marginalized in the film are dogs, and people who are pro-dog or anti-dog, just that alone, I mean, the idea of being pro-dog or anti-dog just shows the idea of division. But another way in which Wes Anderson draws that parallel is that he gives the dogs, even though they're very obviously dogs, he gives them human emotion. The way they communicate with each other and the way that communication is portrayed and the way their emotions are portrayed, especially when it comes to them interacting with human characters, is honestly very humanistic emotion. And this was a good way of Anderson's point that those who you think are unlike you can often be very much like you without you realizing it. And maybe Anderson wasn't actually trying to draw this parallel, but it seemed like he was. If I was right, and if he was trying to draw that parallel, the way he did it was pretty smart. But whether or not you take those connections into account, this movie is honestly one that I would be surprised if somebody did not like at all. Obviously, Wes Anderson is a little bit of an acquired taste. Some people really love his films, others really don't like his films. I personally like all of the Wes Anderson films that I have seen, but I have to say, even though this one does have distinct Wes Anderson traits, it is one of his more accessible films that I think a lot more people will enjoy than hate. I would say that this is one of those movies that's impossible to flat out hate. Even if you don't love it, 
it's hard to dislike it. But overall, I really enjoyed this film. I'm planning on seeing it again if I have the time, and I am definitely getting a copy of it when it comes out on Blu-ray. And another thing that I want to bring up, which I did not bring up in my last review, because my last review, which was for Truth or Dare, was a very negative review, and honestly, that movie made me a little mad. So I didn't want to bring this up in that review, and honestly, I didn't really think to. But it goes back to something that I've talked about in my recent videos, and those of you who have watched them will know that my sister has been going through something that is, uh, to be perfectly honest, really rough. And we have set up a GoFundMe page to help her out through that situation. The GoFundMe page gives a pretty good description of that situation. For those of you who have checked out that GoFundMe, whether or not you've just checked it out or shared it around with people, donated, thank you very much. And if you haven't checked it out already or would like to donate, I'm going to put the link to that GoFundMe in the description of this video and feel free to check it out. All right, guys, that's it for this review. And as always, have a good night.